I don't really want to piss off Italians with this video, but I want to do you a favor that you want me to do anyway, because you don't want tourists. So I'm trying to now spread the word that don't go to Italy as a tourist because Italians don't want tourists. Because just like in Barcelona, just like in Spain, not everywhere, because I've been in Spain, in Galicia, and it was amazing. But some regions don't want tourists because they increase prices for everything and everything is overcrowded and so on. So you don't want tourists, I'm doing you a favor now and I'm warning people who want to go to Italy and telling them don't. Before you comment anything which is completely ir irrational, you cannot change what I've experienced. This is my truth. It's not a fact, stats about the country in general. I'm talking about my experience. So these are my facts. What I have experienced is true 100%. If you go to worst part in Slovakia and say, oh my God, Slovakia is the worst country ever. It sucks. You know, it's not fair. It's really, really not. However, I understand you had a bad experience and you made a video about it. And trust me, there are plenty of videos like that about Slovakia. And I understand people's experience, but saying that it's the worst country in the world is not fair. And this is why in this video, I will not say that Italy is the worst country in the world. It is in my opinion. And that is my opinion. I have not visited all the countries in the world. This is why my perspective is skewed. But right now I feel like this. But this is not a fact. So if you feel like I'm wrong in on a huge scale, please comment below the places I should visit in Italy and preferably pay for my tickets and give me some money for restaurants and so on because I am not planning to spend any of my money in this country anymore for multiple reasons and one of them will be my experience in Calabria but I have made videos on that so go watch those videos because I'm not going to talk about this um, today but I have visited four different regions or places in Italy. That's Sardinia, Rome, Puglia, and Calabria. Altogether, I spent more than two months in there. So you cannot say, oh, you spent only four days in... No, it's been two months altogether in Italy and four different parts. So to me, now I'm thinking it's like this everywhere and the culture is the culture, so it's the same. So you cannot blame me to think the whole Italy is like this. When I went to Italy by myself the first time and I had the bad experience, I left with a little bit of a PTSD. Okay, let's not over exaggerate, but a little bit of PTSD. So I was traumatized in a while, for a while. And then I came back to a completely different part of Italy, which I'm going to talk about in today's video, which is Sardinia. And I got traumatized together with the whole of my family, including little kids. So that was a mistake. Um, and it just confirmed my belief that it's just not a good place to be. The involvement of this fiasco is also from Czech people. So the blame is not entirely on the Italians, but Czech living in Italy, I guess, is going to go for the Italian culture. I've wrote a blog about it, so I'm going to refer to it just to make sure I don't leave anything important out, okay? Also give you a little bit of more context. I've been traveling in the last six months, visited quite a few countries in Europe and Italy was by far the worst experience I've ever had in my life. So I'm going to start with the fact that Italy is probably the most Instagrammed country in the world. All you see is just beautiful nature, beautiful beaches, delicious food. Everything is like, oh my God, chill. It's a perfect place on Instagram. And then the reality is you arrive, everybody's so unfriendly, the prices are up to the roof, the nature is, yes, beautiful, but full of rubbish everywhere. And the food is like, hmm, if they serve you because they can't speak English and they are not trying to be very helpful. So if they serve you in the end, the food is like, okay, it's good, but I'm not gonna die for it. So what's the hype for real? Not to mention, everybody's looking for opportunities, how to rip you off. In the restaurant, in cafe, today's video is going to be about a car. If you go to Italy, I s please don't rent a car. Don't rent a car. Ever. 
Let me take you to the beginning, right? So we rented the whole apartment for me and my family, including three little kids, three year, uh, seven year, nine year old. Okay, that's a, that's a challenge. So we landed and we also rented a car for seven people and we landed and then the guy rental, let's call him Italian rental guy said, um, he's gonna be a little bit late. First, it was 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, he said, oh, there's a little bit of traffic. I'm gonna come in one hour. And we were like, what do you mean one hour? Like, hello. Okay, he came in one hour, apologized. He's super late and he showed us the car. It was a little bit sketchy in the beginning, but I was like, okay, yeah, that's fine. It was cheaper than the actual rental agency. So we were happy. We got into the car. Um, he also said he wants it back cleaned. So the cleaning fee is not included in the rental, which is kind of weird because if you have a flight that is early, you want it, you know, you don't have time to clean it if there's like a sand from the beach, which is quite normal in Sardinia. Anyway, it was like, okay, fine, let's go. Um, we left and then we did the shop, the big shop, and then headed for one and a half an hour journey to our accommodation. Because he was one hour late, we were driving um, in the dark the whole time. And in Sardinia, you can imagine it's up and down, up and down, pretty steep, pretty sharp, um, not very safe, especially if you don't know it and if it's dark. So I was literally like afraid for my life. If we came one hour earlier as he should, we would drive in the dark, maybe only for like 15, 20 minutes. So that's a huge difference. So in, you know, overall it took us two hours because we were going very slow. So the thing between the door, I don't know how to say it. Okay, I don't know much about cars, but listen. So you open the door, we open the door, we got in and then this thing that prevents the air to go through just fell out completely. So we put it back and then we couldn't close the door. After five minutes, we managed it, we closed the door. Then we opened the door after we got from the shop and this fell out again. So then we put it back in five minutes and we said, never open this door again. Okay, that's not a good start, but okay. We drive a car and all of a sudden there's a red alert telling us something in Italian. And we were like, hmm, what that could be? I don't know. We took a screenshot, we sent it to the guy and he said, oh, you're going too slow. It's like, okay, so the car is giving us alert because we're going too slow. Yes, but we are like in the city, like, what do you mean we're going too slow? We're in the city, so we cannot go like 100 kilometers per hour. No, 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 that's, you're going too slow. Okay, fine. So we're driving, the alert is coming on, you know, all the time. Okay, driving, fine. Uh, thank God we survived the journey. We got to the apartment. That's not all for the car, okay? We got to the apartment that Czech people rented out for us. So this is on Czech. And this is also in connection to Airbnb experience I had because this was not Airbnb, but the experience is kind of similar, if not the same. And this is why also I'm just going to go to hotels from now on. The family send us amazing, beautiful pictures. It's a dream. They send us such a long PDF, where to eat, what to recommend. This is such a kid-friendly location. The beaches are appropriate for kids. Uh, the accommodation, everything was like amazing. Too good to be true because it was. We got into the apartment. It was kind of clean, fine, looked great. Didn't have the oven, even though it was said like it's equipped for long-term stays. It didn't have the oven, didn't have the microphone, didn't have the Wi-Fi. You open the balcony, the net, mosquito net was broken in basically all windows. When you close the balcony, there's this kind of hole. Um, so the air, you know, we went in October, so the air goes through in, at night, we were freezing um and the mosquitoes come in so we were bitten the kids were bitten like from head to toe this was horrible by the way on the couch um there was supposed to be the couch that expands into a bed in the living room the couch did not expand so another lie um the balcony doesn't have didn't have a roof and didn't have the draining system so we knew that it's supposed to rain in like two days so all the water is going to go through the apartment because also because of the hole in the door. We were like, hmm, interesting. Okay, and then we found some rubbish on the balcony, the food, food waste. And then we realized that uh, the neighbors are throwing their food, organic food waste out of their balconies. And sometimes it lands on our balcony. Great. Um, and then it's supposedly to feed the turtles. 
And we saw this small, small turtle, yes, but we also saw rats like this. Um, so great. And then the pictures that they that she sent didn't have a fence, but now the fence was all over the you know the property, and it was so close to balcony that the kids could not run outside because there was fence and there was nowhere to go. So the kids were stuck in inside basically and on a balcony. There was also a hummy uh, hammock, but it was put on such a tiny tree that if I went on it it would just break and fall down. So the hammock was just a thing for the picture. Like you couldn't use it. Even the kids were afraid to go on it because it was just ridiculous. Um, so again, no roof, so no privacy. Everybody around could see us. Um, the bonus on the child friendly was that our neighbor uh, was smoking weed as well. So amazing. Um, yeah. That's for the, um, on the apartment, let's say. Oh, there's one more thing. In the couch, we uncovered, that was like one day before we were leaving. Uh, we uncovered a bugs and some big nests of insects. Um, and it was purely disgusting. And we hoped that the mosquitoes, the, the bites we had were from mosquitoes, not from insects inside of the couch. Now let's get to the um, small part and then we go into the car okay and that's gonna wrap up the story and for more stories of course go check out my videos about Calabria because that's a whole longer story as well because I've been there longer the beach it was really nice that's fine uh, apart from a lot of glass everywhere like the small pieces of glass very child-friendly definitely and of course the plastic um, you go to the shop in Italy and you buy three bananas and they are they have this uh, plastic well, like a uh, box and then the plastic foil and there are three bananas in it do you want it or not you know three bananas not two you cannot choose nothing um, two chili peppers uh, all that wrapped in plastic and plastic on it so essentially we produced more plastic waste in Italy in 10 days than we produce in Slovakia in a year. That's crazy. Where is the EU now? This section is going to be called Are we the most unlucky people? Or there is a culture and pattern. And because I have my experience with Calabria, I have to say it's a pattern because very similar happened to me in Calabria. And it was solved in the same way. So we got this car. On the second day, we were driving a car. We started smelling fuel very, very intensively. And we realized the reason why we didn't smell it when we got the car, because there was some kind of perfume. It was so... It's like he just put the perfume everywhere or just sprayed it so much that all we could smell was the perfume. And this is why we didn't notice when we got the car, because we would, of course, do something about it. So now we could smell the fuel and we were going to another beach, you know, and we spent like, I don't know, one hour in the car overall. And the kids and me and everybody started getting headaches. We were sick and it was unbearable. I was like, okay, this is not okay. And then we saw a puddle under the car every time we parked. So there was fuel or whatever just leaking. We called the company and um, told them what's going on. Within two or three hours, we had a new car for free. I was like, this is the best service in the world. They came one and a half an hour from their location to us to give us the better car with no charge. Wow. I was so impressed by this. I couldn't believe this was amazing. This was amazing. They gave us such a great car. It was a Fiat. It was huge. It looked like a Range Rover. It was great. We were so happy. I'm like, oh my God, this is the best company ever. The car, no doors were falling apart, you know, no f smell of the fuel. Amazing. So we got the car. It was in the afternoon. We went to the beach by foot. And then in the evening, we were like, let's go for the ice cream, you know, and the ice cream, the gelato was close to the beach. So that was two and a half kilometers. And with three small kids, it's easier to go by car. That's the, 
That's why we got it in the first place. We got into the car, we go to the beach, two and a half kilometers, we got the gelato, we come back two and a half kilometers, we go to sleep. And the next morning we wanted to go to the beautiful beach, you know, that looks like Maldives. Um, and we got into the car, we're so happy. We're like, this is all good. The whole family goes into the car. We start the car and then, oh, we got the flat tire. There's no air in the tire on the right, in the front. We walk out, check the tire. It was almost flat. And we saw the nail in the tire. So now the question is, because it's the nail, so the air just doesn't go out that quickly. So it's very questionable when this happened. So were we so unlucky that we got this nail after five kilometers of driving the same route we driven for the last two days? Um, or did they got it, they brought the car and then basically the air just uh, was slowly escaping. There's no proof. There's no way we can prove it. And the third option was, my sister said, oh, you know, I heard <clears throat> about some cases that, and you can search it on online, it's true, that in Sardinia, people are taking revenge on tourists and they put, uh, they slash their tires or they put the nails in the tires. And it's funny because just one day prior to that, we saw a couple, um, when they're going from the beach, they had to change their tire because it was flat. And we were like, oh my God, is it the, is it the gangsters, you know, or is it just unlucky? Within two days, I have seen two flat tires. I have never seen or had flat tire in my life. And now in two days, I've seen two. Okay, let's not be paranoid, but we kind of had the proof later, but still. So, okay, there's a nail in the tire and my brother-in-law says, okay, I'm going to change it to reverse. Sorry, in English, it's called spare tire. Um, so we changed the spare tire, you know, and we're going to go to the tire shop and just get it fixed, you know, no big deal. But just We just, you know, texted the rental guy like, oh, we got the flat tire, we're going to put the spare on, but now we're going to the beach buy food and he said oh there's no spare in your car so what do you mean like every car has a spare tire right like especially if you pay for it oh there's no spare tire so you know you have to call the assistance it's like okay we went back to the car and we found the spare tire so we were thinking hmm so he says there's no spare tire and we find one okay we got it out it's half empty so Again, he was right, because it's useless. There's no spare tire. If it's half empty, you can't really drive with it. Plus, we tried, we were like, okay, maybe we can do it. We tried to unscrew the screws. They were too tight, so no way. So we couldn't drive and we needed assistance. So the guy from the car gave us the number for the assistance. That was also the same number in the papers of insurance of the car. We called that number. And it said that the number doesn't exist. We tried a couple of times the same message. So we told him, listen, the, the number doesn't exist. Okay, try this one. He sent us another number. We called and after like three minutes, there was of course automation in Italian and the automation was stuck on one sentence. I keep asking us one sentence over and over again. There was no option for English. So we hung up, we told him there's no English option. He wrote back, there is. It's like, okay. I started thinking that if he, I know this is not his problem because we rented a car from him and if we got the flat tire, it's our responsibility to fix it. It's not his responsibility, right? I understand that. But he was trying to help. He was trying to tell us what to do. So if he was that willing to text us, 100 messages in one day on telling us what to do, he could have picked up the phone and it would be sorted in five minutes. And the reason why I'm saying that is because when we called and actually got through the, in, we got through the operator, I told him, uh, can you speak English, please? One moment, 10 minutes of holding time, right? We were put on hold 10 minutes. I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, in the UK, I was sometimes waiting 45 minutes, you know. But after 10 minutes of hold, like 9.45, 
they hung up or the connection was lost. I don't know. It was just over. So instead of enjoying myself on the beach, enjoying the vacation, nobody seemed to be speaking English. So I cannot really get this done. So we, you know, the Italian guy, the rental guy, text us like, oh, so did you sort it? And we said what happened. And then he said, okay, um, find a tire shop, call them. So they bring, you know, the tow or whatever you call it and, and take your car. And at this point I was like, you know what? Why don't you fucking pick up the phone and call them yourself? Because I thought, okay, we're gonna find a tire shop, which is maybe one kilometer away or two or three. Who's gonna speak English in, in it? So we're going to spend the whole afternoon or evening at this point trying to find a tire shop nearby that speaks English. At this point, I was like, okay, can you please call the tire shop and get it done? We would really appreciate it. We have three small kids here. We cannot go anywhere. If something happens, we have no way to go to the hospital or anything like that. There's no way. We are stuck in the middle of nowhere without a car. And he said, so why is it the problem for you to call someone? And I'm like, because nobody can speak English, bitch. And he was like, okay, I'll call. I'll call tomorrow because it's late. I was like, okay, fine. Oh, tomorrow morning, everything was sorted in like one hour. Because he called, somebody picked up, he said what he needed to do, done. Anyway, they came with the, with the tow to take the car down. And we were on the phone with the rental guy. And of course, the people that came spe spoke no English, but he, they started to like take in the car. And we told the rental guy, like they are taking the car. No, 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 they just have to change the tire. So we told them, but they couldn't speak English. So they just kept taking the car. So we said to the guy, do you want to speak to them? And he was like, yes, because they should not take the car. They should just change the tire. So he spoke to them and then they took the car. <laughs> Okay, so they took the car um, and it was sorted in one hour. We came back and they, they showed us a nail. The nail was sharpened. The side of it, so, so the head of it, was that thin and sharp like a knife and cut in half. So this was so weird because this was not done by pressure. This was done by someone. At this point, we were like, okay, it seemed like it's on purpose because it's just weird. Why would these kind of nails just lying around, lying around on the, on the road? It was just too sketchy. Then we were thinking, how would they know we are tourists? But you know, the car had a sticker that said it's a rental. It, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Back to the apartment, it was raining and we had a basically flood in the apartment because all the it was raining heavily and we had so much water inside so all we had to do was just pump the water up you know just put the water out and we texted the owners and they were like oh you're so unfortunate because it never rains here okay thanks that's very helpful the car great and to finish up the story so first of all what could have been you know, fixed in five minutes and then one hour, took a day and a half. And because nobody just wanted to help us. And then we returned the car. Oh my God, this is the another great part. We wanted to return the car and we had a flight at 8 a.m. So we wanted to meet at the airport at 6.30, just so we have enough time for the security. We have three small kids, it takes time. 6.30, you know, if the pickup, of the car from him is before 8 a.m. He asked 30 euros for this, you know. We were like, okay, yeah, fair play, fine. So we said 6.30, you know, and he said, oh, 7.15 is better. I'm sorry, I'm paying you to get your ass out of your bed 45 minutes earlier. I'm paying you 30 euros for that. Do you know what how much work there is to do for 30 euros and you're gonna get it just because you wake up earlier there's no work you have to do you just have to wake up earlier and then you say 7.15 is better no I'm not asking you to come at 6.30 when I'm paying you 30 euros I'm telling you angrily he said okay whatever it's like okay 
him, he met us and um, he said the car is dirty. It wasn't. We took so much time to take all the sand away from the shoes and from us before we got into the car. The car was clean as hell. He said it's dirty because he wanted money, right? He was like, okay. And then he said, oh, um, towing of your car, you know, 250 euros. What? Yeah, 250 euros. We didn't want to argue because we had enough. But can you imagine, like, if they put the reserve in that would, would be full, and also if they didn't tie the screws that tight, because you have to tie the screws. Well, of course, you don't want your freaking tire to fall apart. But you don't have to do it too tight, because then there's no point to have a spare tire. I call it reserve, sorry. Uh, a spare tire. So you have to have it like in a way that you can actually change the tire, right? Even though there's no point to have a, a spare tire. So it was essentially his fault, despite the nail being there on purpose or not. It was his fault. And he said, yeah, 250 euros. And he took it from the, you know, deposit. And we were like, okay, thank you. And then he left and I started conspiring whether he brought a car because he changed it so quickly. And I started conspiring, of course, being paranoid now. They changed the car so quickly for free. What do Italians do for free? Nothing. They want all your money, even the ones that you don't have. So he changed the car so swiftly. I'm wondering whether he put the nail in there himself so he can charge us 250 pounds, euros, sorry for it because then he would easily change the car of course without charge and he put the spare tire in which is half empty so he knows we cannot change it that's just so like it makes perfect sense to do it this way it just makes perfect sense i don't know okay anything else um we're left when we left the apartment uh, we asked because the owner said like there's 60, 60 euros for cleaning and it has to be paid in cash. But she didn't, she didn't say where to leave it or like do we have to leave it in the apartment or somebody will pick it up or whatever. And when we asked her, she just didn't reply for four days. And then we left. So we left 60 euros cash inside of the apartment. But she never confirmed it. She, like she couldn't give a crap. Or he, I don't even know who it, who it was. He couldn't give a crap. Uh, when we went to a restaurant, for example, to get pizza and so on, we also wanted to get dessert, but everybody was ignoring us after we ate. Nobody was going close to us, even five meters. We, it was just like we had, we had a disease and they didn't want to approach us. And we were very like, like we, we wanted to get dessert, but everybody was just avoiding us trying to wait until we leave okay you're losing money fine but obviously you don't want it or you're gonna get it because you slash our tire or whatever let me know what you think because and i'm telling you this is like not the first bad experience this is like the 51st bad experience in italy i had and i just want to uh, read some comments if i can find them of people that are really you know they really understand what I'm trying to say. Um, and the conclusion of my blog on Medium said, uh, please travel within your own country, forget visiting other countries. And of course I said, like, it's good to travel, you know, and get the experience. But in the end, don't go where they don't want you and support your own economy, especially these in these times. And somebody said, amazingly, exactly what I plan on doing in the future more than enough to see and do in the USA without the language barriers, cultural, cultural differences, etc. Um, I don't care how much cheaper it may be to travel in your country. My sanity and well-being are more important than saving money. So, or cheaper it is to go somewhere else, um, as an Amer American especially. So this is a nice, nice comment I got and so true. And there's another one I want to say. Um, from David. It's crazy how something as small as a nail can become such a huge ordeal, especially when you've got kids in the car. 
the fact that you had to second guess whether it was bad luck or a setup says a lot about how unsettling the experience must have been. The frustration with the whole rental process sounds like a nightmare, and I can see why that would put a damper on your trip. Thanks for sharing. This is what, you know, the reaction I'm hoping for, because I'm really not, I'm just, the reason I'm making this video, just to wrap it up, is if somebody told me before, going to Sardinia especially, or Calabria, if somebody told me their experience, if somebody told me renting a car is not a good idea, if somebody told me what happened to them, how they were treated in overall, I would not go there. I wouldn't go there. I would save the money that I, you know, spend there and spend it in my own country, support my own economy. I would not go there. And this is what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm not saying don't go there. I don't care. Just do it if you want to see for yourself or if you want to have good stories like me, you know. I mean, it was a good story. But if you have certain money for vacation and you don't want to just throw it somewhere, you know, because you don't have more for this year, don't spend it where they don't want you. Whether this is Italy or Barcelona or whatever. If you want to go to Italy, go enjoy yourselves. But then... Don't complain that I didn't warn you.